Okay, I keep in with uh, the bipartisan uh, way we operate on this committee. I'll turn it over to uh, the ranking Republican member. She's a little concerned because the next number is number 57, and she's been worried that she's going to mispronunciate the name for the last 15 minutes. So I said, to do it like fast, fast food place. Number 57, your order's up. So uh, I'll turn it over to uh, the ranking member, uh, Representative Giggler, now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, the next one up is... Um oh, you do? Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> my name is pronounced Colt. It's very easy to say. Oh, and don't feel bad, nobody ever gets it right. So it's O-H? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And it's followed by Daniel Chu and Peter Cook. Cook. I'm from Waterbury, just for the record. I'm here again testifying because of the oath I took when joining the Marine Corps to defend the Constitution. Eight years in the Marines gave me a true love for my country and the rights that, w that were granted to me when I was born here. My deployments took me to some of the most war-torn parts of the world and taught me not to take those rights for granted as most Americans do. I take great pride in the fact that I spent two years of my life in Iraq, <coughs> excuse me, helping those people regain freedom. But that pride is shattered when the government who sent me there now wants to take rights away from me and my fellow Americans. Raising the age to buy a rifle I find extremely disrespectful to me and my fellow servicemen. You are saying at 18 I was old enough to carry a rifle while patrolling the streets of Fallujah, but I'm not old enough to have one to defend my home and enjoy at the range? And the rifle I would own at home is nothing like the one I carried into combat. Why are Connecticut firearm owners being punished for the act of one insane criminal? The proposed legislation will limit the ability to defend my family and enjoy my freedom. Why? Because you are treating me as a guilty man for crimes I did not commit. If even one law is passed further stripping my rights, my family and I will leave this state. Other places in the country welcome law-abiding gun owners, and guess what? those places are safer, have more jobs, and taxes are lower. I've attended many meetings and hearings on the laws being proposed. Many on the other side of the debate want you to think of the victims of gun violence. I ask you to think of all the fallen servicemen. My friend and team leader Jordan Pearson from Milford was killed in action when we were in Fallujah in 2006, along with three other brave Marines of Charlie Company. <coughs> They gave their lives defending our rights, and now you want to take them away. They would not approve of this. Use facts, not feelings, when you vote on proposed laws. Semper Fidel. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your service to our country. It was my honor. And does anyone have any questions? Senator Hartley? Yes, Cole. Thank you, because you've been to a number of these now, including the, the local um, yes, yes, we spoke in Waterbury. Yes. That we, yeah, we've had, and um, your message is very um, well articulated, and um, your service also is recognized and also stands out. I, I um, do not disagree with you about the um, incongruity of uh, a proposal which would say you can defend us on foreign soil, but you come back here and you essentially regress. regress. Um, so uh, thanks once again for being here, and um, uh, we uh, hopefully will get through all of this in a, a rational way. I hope so, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? And please. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'd also like to echo the sentiments of my colleague. Um, I want to thank you for being here. I, th I think it's very important that you put a face on it. Um, you know, we're here passing some serious legislation that could ban someone such as yourself that has put his life on the line for each and every one of us to enjoy the freedoms we have, but yet when you come home, you'll be treated like a second-rate citizen. So I want to thank you very much for being here, for your service, and for, uh, for taking your entire day up. Thank you. I think it matters and it means a lot to each and every one of us. Thank you. It's my pleasure, and that's the reason why I wanted to come, because I think I, I come from a little bit different, you know, perspective of, of this, you know, just, you know, with
with my service. Like I said, you know, I don't want my rights taken away. Um, I've done nothing wrong. And all of my friends, you know, whether they were in the service or not, they've done nothing wrong either. So I see no reason to take away my rights. Thank you. Colt, we had one more question oh. for you. Sorry. <laughs> Representative Mike. Sorry, Michael? I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. uh, again, I want to say uh, thank you for your testimony and your service to the country and simplify uh, in return. Uh, I think your testimony effectively killed this bill. I hope so. That would be awesome. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I say that. I say that, and I'll say that on the House floor about, about your, your service to your country. So uh, thank you for coming up here. You're welcome. And if, if you need me, um, you know, feel free to contact me. I'll uh, do my best to help again. All right. Thank you again. Thank you for your patience. Is that all? I'm not walking <laughs> away from all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Daniel.